Hello all, right, got another testimonial. Uh, quite a long one, but an important one I think, because this one is from the point of view, he's a shipper, started off as a motorcycle carrier, been in the game a very long time, and there's some very good points to be made. He focuses more on the CX in the second half of this, and if I knew how to do timestamps, I would, but I don't. So um, I'm just gonna read it, as I do normally, and you guys can glean whatever you like. So this is from, um, right, this is, I'm just gonna read it. Uh, hiya Pete, it's Clive Littlewood from Roadrunners Dispatch Limited. He said, I'm 65 now, but I started running Roadrunners run, in the 80s with my mates. We were all bikers and a couple were working for a local cab firm as couriers. And they were going all over the shop, lots into London, earning a few quid. Now my old man was a dispatch rider in the war. So did that influence me? Who knows? But I did read the MCN every week and I noticed the columns of adverts in the back of courier dispatch riders wanted in London and elsewhere. Oh, and in Bike Magazine, there was a comic page called Blood Runners about bike couriers, dead cool in those days. My thoughts were, if it's big in London, it will get big in the towns in the north of Watford soon enough. Over the years, the game has changed in so many ways. From not having such a thing as a mobile phone and having to bleep a courier with a radio pager who then had to find a telephone box and call the office just to be asked for an ETA, to now having an app with no paperwork, things have changed, but certainly for the better. The IT for accounts, storing, PODs and such like are, are so cheap now, but I can remember spending a small fortune in those days on an optical drive system to store scanned POD paperwork. I have had over 40 employees at times, <clears throat> and in the 80s we had two physical offices with 10 staff um, running the day-to-day -day operations. We joined the CX in 2017, the CX number 138664, check out our feedback. Now with help from the CX, I run Roadrunners from an office in my spare bedroom. My manager Tim also works from his spare bedroom, that's it. We have a portal live video link via Messenger up all day and it's like we're sat next to each other. We can do about 80k a month on the, that's a good idea though, I like that portal thing. It might work for me if I ever get in the office. Uh, we do about 80k a month, month on the same day. 95% is small, is car, small van work. We do not have any employed drivers anymore. It was not cost effective to run our own vehicles with all the admin and regulations. We decided to go subcontractors only about two years ago now. <clears throat> the CX is our overspill system. When we're having busy days, when all our regular subbies are busy or working for us already, we use a bespoke CMS system provided by Smart LM. Which is, that's Ben from HBC, that's the smart system. You can check that out, it's supposed to be good. Um, which is very well integrated with the CX, so posting and allocating jobs is well catered for. <clears throat> How do we use the CX? Well, for a start, we never negotiate prices. If a driver calls us and asks, what do you want to pay for the job? We politely ask them to put, bid their best price online as we will be making the decision shortly. Just bid your best price online and after five minutes or so, <coughs> excuse me, we will look at the bids, check out if we have used them before as we prefer to use couriers that we know and trust and we will have their bank details already set up. And more often than not, we do not pick the cheapest bid. It is in all our interest for drivers to make money and the CX to stay in the industry. If we get drivers ringing us with jobs, it's a pain. Pete, don't tell drivers, always ring the shippers. We are running such a tight ship, those unnecessary phone calls are just the weight of our time and ultimately our clients. We also have a pet hate on the CX. Calling drivers from the live availability part of the CX only to find the drivers are not available even though he is set to available on the CX app. A real waste of time when you're trying to cover a busy, when you're trying to cover an urgent job. Keep your status up to date. If we get what looks like a silly price, say 50p a mile from someone in a short wheelbase van, we quickly check out where they are based to see if it's a backload for them, or if it's a chance a co-loader who, who will probably not deliver this side of never. Now, if it's a backload, it's a win-win. We get a cheap job and he, she gets paid the extra for going home with a load. When they're going, when they're going that way empty. Oh, 
And if you don't answer the phone when we call you to confirm a job, we give it to someone else who does. Remember, the courier sets the price. People often ask, what's the average price per mile they should charge? I think if you're asking that question, you don't understand what you're getting into. You need to know the true cost before you price any job. We find an average we find an average subcontractor's mileage rate to be round about 75p per mile for cars and small vans, a pound per mile for short wheelbase and medium wheelbase vans, and about 110 per mile for long wheelbase, wheelbase four metres plus. In our neck of the woods, which is Nottingham and Leicester, we pay waiting time after the first 15 minutes at £2.50 per mile, £2.50 for 15 minutes, so £10 an hour. We do not negotiate returns Sorry, we do negotiate returns if they're going back to the driver's home area. We need CX couriers who read the load notes and follow instructions. Keep the CX updated as, as and when, so don't wait 15 minutes to accept the job if you're already on it. You don't even need to call us when you pick up and drop off as long as you've updated the CX and everything went as planned. If you're being kept waiting for more than 15 minutes at any point, call us and we will, agree, we will agree waiting time per 15 minutes. Don't wait 90 minutes and then call us expecting us to be, expecting to be paid. We relay any delays to our clients and invite, advise them of the cost of the ongoing wait and take instructions from them. They are the ones who are paying. Also, the quicker you do your invoices, the quicker you will be paid. Always do the paperwork on the same day if you can. Sat here in our ivory towers, we can't be blamed for bad weather, accidents, road closures, people being out when you've just spent three hours on the road and that super, with that super urgent package, or any of the myriad of problems faced by a courier driver every day. Smile and deal with it. You can blame some shippers for the wrong dimensions or weights, not passing on important instructions, not being able to contact someone at the office when you need them. We also believe in paying the driver as quickly as possible. They are paid for the van, fuel, insurance, etc. and put in the time to do the job, so pay them. It's a poor show when drivers have to wait for sometimes 60 days to be paid. We pay everyone who has worked for us that week on the CX on the, on the Saturday as long as the invoice is on the CX. Drivers will learn who the good guys are pretty quickly. We, will work, we work on the proviso that if, if we pay quickly, then it's, it's, when it's busy on the CX, and you see a job from Roadrunners, you'll know it's going to be a well-documented job that you will be paid for that weekend. And you will choose to work for us rather than Sid Snot couriers who pay 30 days from the end of the month if you're lucky. Very pleased with Sid Snot, I've got to say there, um, Clive. Yeah, contemporary reference for the 18 to 25-year-olds. Brilliant. Um, also, Pete, while I think about it, as a shipper, we often get jobs into London and jobs out of and into hospitals. We hear you, say, we hear you, Pete, saying to the guys in the CX, I keep out of London, don't do hospitals, it takes ages, and it makes me laugh. I, it's quite different for the smaller vans. Small hotshots in and out of London can be good jobs with easy backload probability up the M1 corridor. On hospitals are our bread and butter, so don't knock them. We've, we give detailed instructions if we have them for our local hospitals and trust to make the driver's jobs as easy as possible. So, in conclusion, the CX works for us, that's how we work. Sometimes slow, sometimes busy, sometimes stressed, sometimes cool. But as I always say, if your wheels are turning, you're earning. Keep up the good work, mate. Kind regards, Clive Littlewood who is a director of Roadrunners. Clive, thank you very much for taking the time to, um, uh, yeah, to, to taking the time to um, put it in an email. I think some very, very interesting points there. Um, yes, I mean, I mean, I don't run into London because I can't at the moment because I'm, I'm Euro 5 and because of the zone. But yeah, I mean, I, I, on the whole, I would agree with, I think that's very, very valid. I would agree with most of the things the man says. A few things I might go, hmm, but certainly not anything that I would go, no, that's definitely not right. And just very, very kind of you to pass on your experience. And also to see someone who's been in the game for like, what, 35 years or something like that so he obviously knows his own he knows what he's talking so but as I say I just read these testimonials out I don't this is what other people would experience right in and if you have got experience being on CX here is the where are we can we see that 
There it is. Can we see that? That is my email address. If you want to send me your experiences of being on the CX, whether they were good, bad, or indifferent, I'd like to say I will read them. And if I think they're crazy, I'll go, oh, not really. But if they're like Clive's, or Luke's, or Paul's, or any of the others that we've done so far, I'm just going to read them out. It's there for the people that are thinking of joining, so they can get somebody else's point of view. And it's there for people that have already joined that might go, okay, well, this ain't working for me, or I'll see how everybody else is doing it. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought of doing that before. So there you go, guys. Once again, Clive, thank you very much for taking the time to write in. And I hope you're out there taking care and taking money.